Hey, how's it going? Today we'll be dipping our toes into another cross-generation run and capping off the Gen 4 box legendaries. As far as Palkia goes, Dragon and Water Typing are like peanut butter and jelly. They cover each other's weaknesses very well, and even though Steel and Fairy does exist in this ROM, they just don't factor into the mandatory battles at all, and when you take into account its monster stats, then you just have a lot of potential here. And if you're curious about the rules for the run, they are always in the description if you want to check that out. And if you want to know the tool that I use for these runs, it's called Sanqui, so Google that. And please don't ask me guys, it's only been like 10 seconds. I just said it. I'll also be trying out a slightly different format today. Generally, I just show you guys the most optimized run, but today we're gonna focus on the initial first full playthrough. And then after that, I'm gonna show you the sections of the game that I was able to optimize and my viewer retention is hit or miss and I know that adding content to the end of the video doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in that regard but I just don't care trying new things is important for improvement so if little Timmy clicks off the video at eight minutes no one really cares not a single person cares so watch the whole video if you're someone who just enjoys the channel and honestly let me know what you think because I really value any constructive feedback very highly and let me say that before we begin I do solo run content often and if that sounds like something you might be interested in just consider subscribing to be kept up to date likes and comments are really what helps show YouTube that people are engaging so if you want to be a part of helping the channel grow and getting the videos recommended to other like-minded individuals whether you are a returning viewer maybe someone new or maybe just someone who never thinks about that sort of thing or maybe you're just a little shy maybe you're just a little shy guy just scroll down and type in space chicken and if if the chicken part doesn't make any sense right now, it'll make sense real soon. So with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a sodi pop, and let's just kind of dive into it. From the start, I accidentally named myself just GL, so I guess I'm just a nameless gym leader today. And there's no way to edit these sort of ROMs, so you'll notice from the overlay compared to the last couple of videos, the game hook software just isn't compatible with this ROM. That means that today we'll be gathering our own information, and for this run, we will be naming Palkia Chicken. And I told you guys that Space Chicken will make sense soon, and I'd like you guys just to behold this back sprite. Tell me that this doesn't look straight up like a big balking chicken. I love it, and what I don't love, and while I'll probably get away from a lot of legendaries in these Sanqui runs, is that they love to put these Pokemon into Gen 1 with only Tackle, and that's what we start out with here. It's essentially a lottery. Pokemon like Garatina got no help, and they suffered on Brock as a result, despite having insane typing and potential, while something like Dialga got a stabbed move that's super effective on Brock at level 6. Now, I do accidentally run into an extra trainer here, but since this is my first playthrough, I just let it ride. And these are the types of user errors that I can correct for the optimized playthrough that we'll go over after this one. Now, I know you guys can just look over at the sidebar, but Palkia does hit the lottery, and the Sanqui guys decide to bless us with Water Pulse at level 6. It's a non-Gen 1 move, but it's pretty much just Bubble Beam that has a chance to confuse rather than a chance to lower the speed. The confusion aspect of it never comes into play, but it's a pretty solid stabbed water move and definitely means that Palkia is not going to flounder on Brock. It's just an easy one shot on both Pokemon and just like that we can continue on. Something I had been thinking about for my playthrough is allowing safe states in a couple of specific scenarios. For all my runs, Paris is a rare spawn that I need to catch in red and blue. Knocking one out or failing to catch it just feels really bad and it wastes a lot of my personal time. So from now on, I'm going to be allowing a safe state here to ensure that I catch it. I just thought I'd mention it because if I didn't, you guys would never know and I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm very transparent. From there, I take on rival number three. I do avoid any sand attacks and I crush this battle. But the thing I want to mention is that I'm facing Charmander in this run. Normally, I face the hardest challenge, which would be Blastoise or Venusaur, but I just have no control over the Sanqui ROMs. I also didn't do Misty first because being severely underleveled and only having having tackle just isn't going to work out. I'm sure eventually I could get past it, but I'd rather not just rack up resets and I can't even learn bubble beam so it really doesn't matter. The only thing to note after is that just like Dialga, Palkia does learn slash at level 15 
and with our speed, it's a guaranteed crit. And with Water Pulse and Slash, we can really start to get through this high cluster of battles very fast and very efficiently. Afterwards, I'm level 18, and I can comfortably take on Misty. Water Typing means she will not use her powerful special attacks on Starmie, and even if she did, Palkia does double resist those. And with Slash, this one is fast as easy, and that's kind of going to be the theme for 90% of this run. Now moving on, let me talk about a mistake here. Since the San Kui runs are at an inherent disadvantage from normal runs, I thought it would make sense to let just one Pokemon handle all of the HMs. Randomizers usually have a setting to where every single Pokemon can learn every HM to stop you from getting stuck. And I thought initially that if I let Paris do something like learn Dig, Cut, Strength, and Fly, that it might save a little bit of time. And this was a mistake, and during the corrections part at the end, I'll go over why. There's no Body Slam today, and rival number 3 is beyond easy, so let's just skip ahead to the Vermilion Gym. With my software on the regular videos, the trash can puzzle is pre-solved automatically, so this is another disadvantage. To alleviate this, I'm going to allow another save state. I'm simply just going to find the right trash can, make a save state, and I'll keep reloading it until I solve it on the first try, and this is the only way I could think of that would make it fair. As far as Surge goes, we take neutral damage, and I don't heal. The first two Pokemon are just nothing. Slash can one-shot them and move us on to the end of the fight fairly easy. Like any problems that you might have with Surge, it's going to be on the Raichu. Slash cannot one-shot it, and even though Surge normally has awful move selection and AI, he actually uses back-to-back -back Thunderbolts the first attempt, and that forces my first reset of the run. I think that if I would have healed here, maybe I would have been fine, but it is what it is. We can't change it now. The second attempt, Surge just just uses Thundershock back to back and it's much easier and we just get by. And like a lot of the top tier runs, Thunderbolt is the real prize here. This is one of the best coverage moves in the entire game and it's very welcome to speed up Rock Tunnel and other parts of the game. From there we can skip over Rock Tunnel and dive right into Celadon. I do the rocket hideout first and I do the typical pickup of high money items and as you would expect from a water type, Giovanni is extremely trivial and we can just keep it moving. I also just noticed during my recording that I have an extra extra reset and I had to go back and do some digging and I discovered that I accidentally ran into an extra trainer and willingly reset so that's where that comes from if you're wondering. Next I take on Erica and this one was a little bit optimistic. I don't have super effective damage and this one is pretty risky. I could tank a razor leaf but what ends up happening is I get put to sleep and there's no hope at that point and I have to take another reset. The second attempt there is no sleep powder and I'm able to get this fight down. I do get to learn Dragon Claw and it has some really nice physical damage and be sure to comment below to tell me how nice the really and totally physical damage that dragon type is in generation one i would really appreciate it physical dragon damage comment below overall this one is pretty clean and even though it costs one reset i think this fight could be planned out a little better i'll be skipping over pokemon tower today and after that i dip down into the safari zone and i finish up my usual routing to have the most money possible this means it's time for my big celadon buy and for this run i stack up on calciums to get my damage up and it seemed like the safest play considering that our speed is already pretty great and I guess you could argue that my special is amazing too but it doubles on both offense and defense so just shut up. Now it's time for self -co. The important thing here for coverage is the TM for Earthquake on the 10th floor. Perhaps the better overall move would be to grab this and then go to Fuchsia to face Koga first but today we are looking for the fastest in-game time so we're going to be testing my limits against rival number 5. This is very much a risk reward type situation and if I can pull it off it's going to help the run out a lot. So let's just queue up that music and see how it goes. The lead is Pidgeot, and I have Thunderbolt for this. I'm not sure if uh, it would one-shot normally, but we have a 20% chance to crit, and it comes into play here, and we can move on quickly. Execute is next, and it's ironic that two playthroughs in a row we're going to have some problems here. I don't have a great way to deal with it, and it looks like Slash is going to be a three-shot, but I get paralyzed, and I'm able to eventually take it out, but my speed is halved, and I'm missing about 60% of my health. Then Gyarados comes in, and we do have Thunderbolt, but given the circumstances of the fight so far, I can't get one off, and I get taken out for the first reset of this fight. On the second attempt, I can confirm that a non-crit Thunderbolt can one-shot the Pidgeot, and that's good information to know. And once again, here's where the problems lie in the fight. Execute is an absolute menace, and I've already been over the problems, and it looks like the AI will always want to go for Stun Spore, or some sort of status move while it's going to take three hits for me to knock it out, 
And in this attempt, I'm actually miraculously able to take out the Gyarados and the Alakazam just kind of bugs out and it does about five turns of nothing and I'm able to actually make it to the Charizard. But at this point, I'm too low, my speed is halved and it has access to Dragon Rage. And at this point, I do try a single rare candy. The hopes is that this might put the Execute in a two hit range and maybe it'll miss its move. It'll give us a chance. And this time it actually puts me to sleep instead of paralysis and it starts letting some confusions rip. I wake up, but unfortunately, it's still not a two shot with one candy, but I am able to get past without paralysis. Now since I still have my full speed, I'm able to mow down the Gyarados easily enough, but the Alakazam frustratingly can barely survive a slash. It does some damage to us, and I'm barely hanging on at this point. Now Charizard comes in, and I have one shot but it outspeeds me. And since I need 41 health to survive a Dragon Rage, once again, we have to reset. I go back in this time with two candies, and I'm hoping that this will knock out the Execute now because I'm faster, but for some reason, it doesn't seem like the levels are really helping. It's still a three shot for those annoying eggs that haunt my dreams, and I get hit with paralysis. Now I actually make it to the end here with over 40 health, but I make a massive blunder here. I'm not gonna spoil it, but you can comment below if you spot it, and at the end when we go over the optimize run, we'll talk about it. Either way, Water Pulse just isn't strong enough to one hit the Charizard, and I go down once again. I think I forgot to hit my keyboard reset here, so the reset's gonna stay at seven, but it's actually supposed to be eight. I fatten up my Palkia with even more candies, and this time I'm praying that going to level 34 puts the egg in two shot territory, and it looks like it does. I get put to sleep, and I unfortunately go below that 41 HP threshold, but I'm able to proceed without actually being paralyzed. This means that predictably I don't one shot with water pulse and I'm taking out like the little chicken that I am. Now at this point I think level 34 is the level. I just need a little eggy luck to be over 40 HP at the end of the fight. The win condition here is very clear. Now I get put to sleep this time. I take some pretty heavy damage but at the end of the battle I'm at 49 HP and I'm barely above where I need to be. The Gyarados is a one shot and I outspeed so there's no worries there. The Alakazam goes for a disable but now at level 34 slash is a one shot so we're looking to be in a pretty decent position and at level 35 I outspeed, Water Pulse doesn't one hit it, I can survive the Dragon Rage and then I can finish it off on the next turn. Now this one wasn't great but this is kind of what happens on first playthroughs and all I can really do is just kind of keep this in mind and this will be one of those key points to correct in the next run. Let's skip over the second Giovanni fight and go straight to Koga. I picked up Earthquake and this one is how you would expect. I can just mow down basically his entire team and I don't lose a single point of health if you want to know how easy it is. And as always, the speed badge boost from defeating him is nice and we can just keep this rolling. From there I double resist fire and I can surf now so I think Blaine is the smart play. I take a very brisk and nice swim down to Cinnabar and after not doing anything extra today, we can get a chicken edition of Tombstoner Brother. And now it's time to take on the gym. And what can I really say about this one? It's an absolute demolition like you would expect. And I don't need to spend any time on this. This is perhaps Palkia's best matchup of the entire run. And the special badge boost that we get for the reward is very nice. And that's about all I can really say in terms of commentary. Now let's take a look at Sabrina. This one should be easy and it does look pretty easy. Slash can swiftly take out the Kadabra and the Mr. Mime, which is the only fairy type in the run that I face by the way. Now some small problems start to creep in on that pesky out of place Venomoth. I don't one shot it and it puts me to sleep and it starts to beat me down a little bit. And by the time I wake up and take it out, I'm at about 40% health with Alakazam waiting in the wings. I go for Slash, but Alakazam moves first, it uses Disable on Slash, and it wastes my turn. Sidebeam takes me down to just 2 HP, and this one's not looking good. Earthquake does decent damage, but it's a long way off from a one shot, but I get some luck here. It goes for Disable, it fails, and I'm able to barely scrape by this fight by the skin of my teeth, and this one was much closer than I thought it would be. Now speaking of closer than what I thought it would be, Giovanni's a joke, and instead, we can go ahead and start focusing focusing on what's coming ahead. Rival number 5 gave me a ton of trouble and it cost me a lot of candies so how's the upcoming rival number 6 fight gonna go? I heal up and I just kinda dive straight into this one without doing any 
anything extra, so let's get that music going and see how this one plays out. This one should be similar to Rival Number 5, and with Pidgeot in the lead, things are looking very similar indeed. One hit from Thunderbolt is all it takes, and we can move on. And Rhyhorn is next. Good job, Rhyhorn. Now we get to see if Execute gives us similar problems. Slash is easily enough to two-shot this time, and it decides it wants to take in some sunlight to set up for a solar beam, and I'm able to get through unscathed. Gyarados is next. I have Thunderbolt. 2 plus 2 equals 4, guys. Alakazam is next. It outspeeds me. It hits me with Psychic. It doesn't crit, and it's not that bad since I have great special, and I'm not sure if a crit on my Earthquake mattered here, but I do crit anyway, and I take it out regardless. Now it's Charizard time. This time I have a stronger move in Surf, and I'm able to both outspeed and obliterate it in one hit. Overall, this fight was pretty much night and day from rival number 5, and it was nothing but one shots. I can't complain about this one, and it has me feeling pretty confident looking forward. Before heading into the league, I toss the rest of my candies at my chicken, and that gets us to level 50, and let's just take a look at Lorelei. Or I should probably say let's not take a look at Lorelei, uh, because Thunderbolt makes this fight very easy, and when you have a special like Palkia, it's even easier. The level disadvantage just doesn't matter here, and I'm able to one-shot pretty much everything. I have a physical attack for the Jinx, and even though the Lapras can hang on, it just doesn't have the firepower to threaten me back and we can very quickly move on, and this is exactly what I want to see. Next up is Bruno, and normally I'd make some joke here, but Sanqui Bruno and the way Special is calculated a little bit different in these ROMs just means that he's not as easy as shown in the Dialga video. Now I'm not weak to fighting today, and even though a neutral Ice Punch along with some other chip damage get us pretty low, I'm still able to one-shot this fight and there's just not much else to say. It was way closer than the last several fights have been, but at the end of the day, it's Bruno. As far as Agatha goes, you guys already know. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog levels of fast. I have Earthquake, and this combination means Agatha's gonna be trivial, and that's just what I like to see. This one isn't worth diving into, and we can just keep it rolling. Lance is up next. I teach Blizzard before the fight, and then I just dive in. And this one, it's not gonna be a surprise at this point. It's I'm a broken record. It's easy. It's trivial. I have Thunderbolt for the Gyarados. I have Blizzard for the Dragons. I have Surf for the Aerodactyl. And once again, we are cruising, and we're making these in-game fights look absolutely absolutely trivial and you might not like it but I'm personally loving it. Finally up is the champion and I had an easy time on the sixth rival fight so let's see if we can finish this run off clean. Pidgeot is first. Thunderbolt is the more accurate move but I do go for Blizzard here. I miss once, I connect on the second and we can just move on. Alakazam is next. I don't one shot it with Earthquake but it does just set up a reflect and at that point it's just too low for it to really matter and I take it out in the next turn. Rhydon comes in and it makes the fastest appearance in the entire run and we can move on in about three seconds. Seconds. Executor is next. It's a beast in these Sanqui runs, but I have Blizzard now, and I can just one-shot it, and Blizzard has pretty much completed its main purpose. I have Thunderbolt for the Gyarados, and it's a one-shot, and you might say, Matt, don't you ever get tired of just one-shotting Gyarados? No, I don't. I would, I could do this for eight years straight, guys, and never get tired of it. And finally, Charizard is up. I outspeed, and Surf can finish off the battle clean with a fitting one-shot and one of the most clean Elite Four runs. I've ever had. And Palkia has done it. I made some minor mistakes here and there, and I racked up some resets because I wasn't prepared for rival number five, but outside of that, it was a very clean run. And remember, my resets are actually one higher, so let's just stop talking and look at the stats. Palkia finishes with a record low level of 55, eight total resets, and an impressive time of two hours and 32 minutes. This makes it the second fastest run I've ever done, and you would think that I'd be very happy with that and would be done, but in my heart of hearts, I know that I left a bunch of time on the table. And being the kind of person I am that does these runs, I cannot allow that to happen. But before we take a look at the parts of the run that I can improve on, and what I was able to actually squeeze out of an optimized run, wait a second, my producers are just riding in and they told me that we have time for bonus footage. Guys, we got bonus footage today. Now as far as Mewtwo goes, it doesn't set up barrier, and it doesn't nuke me down with some crits either, so I'm able to get off some heavy damage with some earthquakes, and when it finally does set up a barrier, I just swap to serve, and this one's not too bad despite the massive level disadvantage. There are no extra resets here for Palkia, 
and this was pretty impressive, about as impressive as the first run was. Now guys, don't click off the video yet. Let's take a look at the optimized run, and we'll take a look at a few improvements I was able to make while doing it. The thing that made me want to do another run was a huge eureka moment I had. I was sad that I couldn't get perfect DVs on these Sanqui runs, but I had an epiphany about Game Shark codes and if they would actually work. Now since basically these Game Shark codes are just setting the first slot in your party, I gave it a try and sure enough it worked. This means that I can do the optimized route with perfect stats and it's going to help out a lot. I'm glad I discovered this one and it's really going to help out future cross gen runs. The second thing is that I didn't try to use one Pokemon for every HM. Now it saves time if I just know for example that my second Pokemon slot is a Sparrow and it has Fly at the top of its list and then there'll be a Paris in the number 2 slot. Lot, and I know it has dig and cut and then I have the Lapras so it doesn't seem like it would save a lot of time but at the end of the day it saves a little bit of time menuing and that can save you a minute or two overall. Another pretty big thing to change up here is that I pick up Carbos and Proteins rather than Calciums in the Celadon Mart. There were lots of times that I was just barely off of knocking out things with physical damage and I also pick up Ice Beam here and this is something that was definitely I, I underestimated this a ton in my first run. This this means that we can hold off on Erica, and this makes her 100% consistent and this amends a reset that we had on our first run. As far as rival number 5 goes, I do have one reset. I unfortunately just forgot to use my rare candies, but the issue here is that I didn't one shot the Alakazam and I got hit by a Kinesis and that caused me to miss on the Charizard and get taken out. Now for this fight, Ice Beam completely makes Execute a non-issue and the huge thing that I forgot earlier that I was talking about was that I actually had Surf and I could have upgraded Water Pulse for a stronger guaranteed one shot on the Charizard but I didn't. With both of those things in the optimized run, this one is very easy and I think if I had actually used the candies the first attempt instead of just running in here like an idiot, uh, I wouldn't have to do a reset at all. But doing it this way does save me a rare candy for the late game. The rest of the run plays out basically exactly the same except that I have an extra rare candy for the Elite Four. And we saw how easy it was and if you're wondering if Ice Beam is inferior to Blizzard, maybe I'm missing out on a one shot, the answer is there is one. I barely failed to knock out the executor and it cost me a single turn, but I'm fine with that. So with these changes in mind, we can see that Palkia finishes a level higher on this run at 56 and we only have a single reset caused entirely by user error and guys, just feast your eyes on this. Palkia, when fully optimized with perfect DVs, has a time of 2 hours and 22 minutes. That means that there's a new leader, and it's cool to see, but I want you guys to keep in mind that Mewtwo is a very dated run. A lot of my older runs could be faster, and one day we are going to go back and see if we can improve those runs, but for today, let's just celebrate a new champion at the top. Now, I always have a blast doing these runs. I know some people might not like these great Pokemon just pushing the game down, bending them over, and making it look easy, but I like the change-ups and the differences and the dichotomy between runs like this and the Executor runs that I had are night and day, and I need that change-up. But this was a new format overall. Let me know what you guys think after seeing the full run and then seeing the real condensed version of the things I could do to optimize it. Feedback helps me out a lot, and I'm not sure how I feel about this right now. I think it might just add extra time to the video, and analytics show me that most people don't make it past around 15 minutes, so maybe I should work on maybe shortening the videos rather than prolonging them, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. It took a Pokemon from the fourth generation to travel back in time, but something was finally able to beat Mewtwo. And honestly, it just kind of has me wanting to go back in time and see how low I can actually get the Mewtwo time. And that's all I have for you guys. If you made it this far, you're a real one, and I appreciate the support, because I can't grow the channel without people like you who stick around at the end and interact with me. It's a group effort, and if we ever want to make something out of this channel, it's people like you that will help the most when it actually might happen. Now, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!